That's 290. Oh, pretty cool. Take it over here. Uh, pour it out on the oil. Marble, this will help to yeah. suck up some of that heat. Be very, very careful. Remember, this is 290 degrees. It can burn you really badly. So you want to make sure that you're really protecting yourself and making sure that you don't end up uh, getting a burn. It's not just going to cause a first degree burn. It's most likely going to cause a second or a third degree burn. So you're really bad. And be very careful. Letting that sugar kind of just sit there on the marble, letting that heat get absorbed by the marble, we're going to go ahead and then start to uh, move it around a bit. We're going to kind of scrape it up from the marble and get, um, get it cooled off and ready for pulling. There's a table here. Did you know? <laughs> the heat. So this is similar to tabling chocolate with the scrape and cooling? In some ways, yeah, it's, this is going to be um, to kind of keep it together. Uh, it's not really about developing crystallization. Though. In this case, it's more about uh, cooling it down. You can see the bubbles starting to form in it. And the bubbles are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. That's when they put their color and their flavor. Yeah, I often do it while it's cooking at 266 degrees, but that's um, either way. Whether you do it now or whether you do it later. You can see how the stuff forms strings really easily at this point. This also helps me gauge when I can start picking it up with my hands. Now you may think, your hands, why in the world would you want to do that? Well, eventually you have to touch it. And it's hot, don't get me wrong. It'll be about 150, 160 degrees. So it'll be about like the mozzarella you had to play with? Yeah, pretty uncomfortably hot. But, um, that said, it will be manageable. And you have double gloves on. Yeah, it's not too bad at this point. Isn't a sugar burn the worst kind of burn you could get in the kitchen? Yeah, um, mainly because sugar sticks to you, so um, yeah, you won't ever get it off. I have a pretty bad scar right here on the top of one of my fingers where uh, it stuck to me and I couldn't get it off. Well, I pulled it off, and I've got a pretty deep scar because of that. Yeah, just let it sit. He's like, it's the worst thing you can do. Alright, I'm going to stop working with the tools because these are just getting to be messy now. I'll throw that in some water here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it over. You see, it's still sticking to me. Yeah, I should have sprayed my gloves. Is it too late? No, I've got, I've got two pairs of gloves on. So what I'll do is I'm going to get rid of this pair. <laughs> it's not really that high anymore. It's pretty manageable. It's about like the cheese, right? Yeah, it's a lot like the cheese at this point. It's really now what you'll notice is I work here, I'm twisting, folding it over, twisting, folding it over, twisting, and I hold on to it as long as I can. But I have these really tender hands compared to real sugar artists. Um, the wonderful sugar artist Awald Nodder, his hands are like, you know, leather. They're really well seasoned. And you can tell that he's been doing this for years. I was watching a Food Network Challenge, it was a sugar art challenge, and I watched a master sugar art It is pretty amazing. To watch AWOL do it, I remember him coming to the school when I was at, at the culinary and he did a demo. Shaving can't get people like that to come here. 
Now you'll notice this starting to satinize, mm -hmm. starting to become like satin. By twisting, folding over, and then twisting again, folding over, I'm incorporating air bubbles that weren't in there before. And they're getting smaller and smaller, and they're starting to create this sort of satiny appearance. Now, there's a point at which here we can start looking at the possibility of blowing this. And if we're going to blow it, it's nice and warm right now. So now's a good time. What I've done here is I've embedded um, this copper tube inside the sugar. Oh. Can't go too fast. <laughs> Gotta get to the right consistency. What you'll notice is I put it on my hand here to cool it down. So other parts will start to uh, blow and get thinner instead of just that one area. I have an air hole. another hole. Let's see if I can keep the holes from forming. Oh, wow. I have another hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's try to get it with another piece. I'll put that aside. That's perfectly good sugar, so we'll still use it for other things. But I'll keep that copper tube kind of open. If it ever gets to a point where it's um, too encrusted, I'll take a torch and get rid of some of that excess sugar.